Hey guys, welcome to season four of the Wilderness Living Challenge. I got a black bear leg and bear fat. I'm gonna cook these two together to make a delicious meal. The goal of the Wilderness Living Challenge is to gain or maintain body weight. We've weighed in and at the end, we're gonna weigh out. If we lose one pound, we fail the challenge. We're gonna see if we can master the wild eating only wild food. Guys, we're gonna cook up bear meat and bear fat. Join me on this video. All right guys, if we wanna cook bear meat and bear fat, the first thing we need to do is get our bear. Let's go get our bear. <laughs> Take a side. All right, that was simple enough. We got our bear leg and we got bear fat. Now all we gotta do is combine the two, cook them up and make a delicious meal. All right guys, we're all rigged up. I got old trusty here. Looking for some ducks flying up the gut here. We're at the front of the river. I got my beaver meat here as standard. Practice. I'm gonna eat my beaver meat and I'm gonna wait for some more food to come my way. Hmm. That's making my stomach turn. <laughs> Zach's down below. He's uh he's all rigged up too. I must look like a fool. I got a GoPro on my head, which I'll never get on time if a if a duck flies in. I got my headphones on. So I don't get my ears ringing again. Matt, we're just gonna hang tight. We already missed two ducks. Not that we shot at them, but they buzzed through real super fast. There's Zach down there. Where's your beaver stew? I, I'm, I'm done with the beaver stew for today. I had a bowl. You're going back for seconds. That's brave. That's just brave. So those ducks are flying super, 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 super fast down here. And then they're gonna go roost up for the night. All right, I get to eat dessert while I duck hunt. It actually doesn't look bad when you stir it, but it pretty much looks black on the top. I don't know why it looks black on the top. Hopefully just because of the cast iron. I'm actually not really looking forward to this bite all that much. Oh, it's hot. Now nah, it tastes fine. It tastes like bitter apple fat now. My face is a mess. Whew. Oh. Alright, I'm sick of all our food, Jack. <laughs> oh. That didn't take too long, did it? Oh, it's just better. Those apples are, they're going. They're not keeping very long. Oh. Be a rough go just to live off the land. That's for sure, day in, day out. The good thing about duck hunting, if you ever decide you want to take up duck hunting, is you could just shoot the poop. You don't have to be too quiet, move around. I even know some guys who get, take out a grill and they make bacon and eggs inside the duck blind. Like that's pretty cool. Drink coffee, just sit there and wait for the birds to come in. So that's pretty much what Zach and I are doing. And the sun is setting. Oh, and I should have made some coffee. You should have made some coffee. There you go. Yeah. That would have been a good idea. Or some wild tea. Nah. Yeah, no. Nah. nah. Oh, my old life back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nope, nothing happening yet. But the birds will fly until the very last little bit of light and then past that, even in the dark. They're nuts. And they fly like rockets. They're like the fastest flyers I've ever seen. It's so hard to shoot when they're on full tilt. That I haven't done yet. So that's on my list of things to learn and master. It's wing shooting birds. 
I got no ducks. And no ducks flew by for that matter, which is, you know, how hunting goes pretty much. You're there and waiting and nothing comes. No, it's not always like that. You just put your time in and eventually your odds cancel themselves out and you get something good. Well, there's so. plenty of grouse ducking left. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, do, we should throw that in the fat and eat it up. Yeah, yeah, anyway, it's in there. Yeah. That's it for today. We're gonna we're gonna cook some bear up tomorrow, I think. Oh yeah. Zach's got a project in mind, so we'll see what shakes out. We'll wake up early tomorrow and try to get some uh, try to get some ducks because they're tasty. We're tired of eating mammals, apparently. We could go out and fish, but we won't. I don't think we will because uh, fighting that wind in the canoe is, and it's freezing, freezing cold. It's not something we want to do tonight or tomorrow or any time for that matter. It's just too cold to be out in the water. So I have something else in mind. I'll have to st stick around. We're going to go try something else. But uh, yeah. Tomorrow might be our last day at this location, but there's still a lot to come. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a lot done. Yeah. Yeah. So far, so good. Just had a second launch or third launch. I don't know what it is now. And uh, surprisingly, my digestion, digestion is like bang on, which is odd considering I was not feeling very well and I threw up last night. But uh, my bodily body, my body, I need more sugar. My body is handling the fats, like liquid fat, butter, liquid, olive oil, like drinking it straight up really well, which I'm kind of surprised about. I didn't think that would be the case, but <laughs> pretty cool. All right, we're up <coughs> bright and early. I'm just posted on the, I guess up on the bluff here. I'll turn around and show you. I got a pretty good view of anything coming in. We're going out from the lake here. <clears throat> I had uh, breakfast of champions is cold beaver stew, it's mostly lard on the top. Let's grab a mouthful. <laughs> it's cold too, like real cold. Mouthful up, mostly fat. A little bit of meat, some bones in there. That's a bone. That's a crunchy bone. Let's we'll see if we can't see some birds flying through here. We've seen them every morning. Zach said they're going that way, and I think they're going this way, so they must be going both ways. Last night, I'm going to show you some footage that happened last night. We had a moose in camp. Kept getting wake, woken up, woken up, woken up. And uh, maybe there's an ATV or something with a trailer. Branches were cracking. I'm like, oh, I gotta go look at this. So I walked out on the other side on the, the other bluff. And sure enough, the moose was grunting at me. Grunting at me, grunting at me. I tried to get the flashlight on, but uh, had a through night, the small one, it wasn't strong enough. And by the time I got the throw light, the uh, the throw light, the through night throw light, catapult V6, I, I, uh, the mooks was just across the other way, so. Play a few of those clips later. Wow, it was pretty wild to see him like a moose was literally 20 yards away from me. Getting the fire ready so we can get warm and it's cold. It's really cold. <laughs> that was a hard roll out of bed this morning. It was like, oh, I want to get a duck and I'm nice and cozy. But you, this is, whoo. You, you heard that moose? Yeah, I heard the moose. I heard you calling to it. <laughs> and I kept hearing it going further away, it sounded like. So I was like, nah. Well, no luck so far on the ducks, but we'll definitely be keeping an eye out. And sometimes they give you a bit of warning. We can just run out and 
pop them. It's uh, this not the best spot in the world for duck and geese. I have another spot in mine, so depending on how things turn out today, it might be our last day at this spot, and we'll move on to a place that has a little bit more of the things we're looking for at this moment in time. Here's what we're looking at for our wild foods. We got uh, apple mash left over from yesterday, uh, beaver stew on the bottom always. We have a little bit of duck left over from yesterday, which we're probably gonna saute again in that bear fat underneath there. And then we have leftover bear, uh, beaver meat, beaver stew that I haven't eaten yet. I'm just gonna heat it up a little bit so I can eat it warm. Beaver meat with bear fat. Not too bad. I wasn't too keen on this applesauce yesterday. It's a little black. Turns out it uh, tastes a little bit better in the morning. I guess maybe when you're hungry. I heat it up. Not as bitter. It's kind of black. Gray. Like that doesn't look like applesauce, does it? But I woke up last night hungry. This morning mostly. Chasing that moose around. Ah, but it's too cold to go eat. A lot of things on the go, and you really should go back to start to figure out how we got here. I want to show you. I want to show you real quick. We have a primitive storage area here. Underneath that moss is all our spoils. We have a bunch of bears, legs, uh, torso. We have a beaver left. We have call fat and we also have bear fat. That's all stored right there. It's uh, It's been super cold that night, so we're not worried about anything spoiling. And if it started to warm up a little bit, we would add some water on top, but it's uh, tucked away in the shade, which is exactly what we want in order to maintain that cool temperature so our meat doesn't spoil in the long run. If we got any warmer than this, we'd have to resort to something like cold smoking. Uh, not recommended to do that with uh, bear meat because bear meat has to be well cooked and smoking is not a great way to do that. We could cold smoke it and then get it nice and dry uh, and then reheat it and cook it which is essentially what we've been doing with our beaver meat so far. It's just a cook recook method so that's an easy way to make sure that we kill the bacteria every day and then by the end of the day it cools off so much at night it's almost refrigerator temperature. You can only do that so many times before you run the risk of actually contamination and having the meat go bad but it it can last a long time have the meat the heat on there all day long i've been f digging through our beaver meat here fishing out some bear fat we do have lots of bear fat left but it's nice to uh, extend it as much as possible this is uh, pretty fatty right now fatty protein mess it's about the perfect consistency to add to a stew so if you know you had some uh, potatoes or carrots, throw them in there, some onions, that would be a bang on perfect. Just pick the bones up. By now it's already lingered and mellowed and all that good stuff, taking all the bone marrow out of the bones. So on this side over here, we have our duck that uh, Zach cooked up yesterday that we didn't finish. It was a uh, spit roast and we did a challenge. So if you're just uh, starting to watch now, go back and check out that, how that challenge turned out. The challenge was doing Dutch oven versus spit roast and we wanted to find out what would be better tasting naturally the cast iron dutch oven one the reason is because it locks in all that goodness those are those globules of fat eat those straight up that's pretty much on our diet we're eating straight up fat fat protein and then i'm getting a little bit of sugars from my apples Breakfast served? Breakfast. What are, you yeah. gonna go, what are you gonna go for? That's the question. A little bit of everything. Yeah, that's that's the duck, rule, right? Duck gross. Like a little bit of oh, fat. There's a piece of bear hair in there. Gross. A little bit of grouse leg. A little bit of. Alright. It needs some more overdobo spice on there. It does? Yep. Mm. That tastes so good. Doesn't it the taste little good? globules of yeah. fat are just like 
grizzled up in the pan. It tastes so good. And you guys might think we get the runs from this, but we don't get the runs from this. No. Nope. Actually, my body's handled this 100%, uh, 90%. There was one night where Not I over ate. And yeah. uh, that, wasn't, that was a mistake. So I ended up throwing up a little bit and uh, having the runs, but only slightly. So getting the right ratios is key. And after you go through the adaptive phase, which is, you think about five or six days or something like that? Yeah. And your body's through it and you're, and you're fine. Well, if you drop in the sugars at some point, yeah, you're gonna go to a, you're gonna go through a phase where it's gonna be, you know, not so good on your, your stomach and things like that. And you're gonna be running to the bushes, using up all your toilet paper, <laughs> whether it be moss or <laughs> right? otherwise, but yeah. Cool. All right, so mm. this is our breakfast and probably lunch. So we're having a, Zach's got his camera running over here. I'm just going to show you guys real quick. There's a lot of calories in there and we don't have to eat a lot of volume to get 25 and 3500 calories because it's mostly calories from fat. And that's the key to not filling up on empty calories and fiber that you might ordinarily find out in the wild. Uh, Zach and I are going to split up. I'm going to go that way. Zach's going to go this way. And we're going to see who can come up with some lunch. Let's see who takes the prize today. Let's see if we can't add some more gross to our diet. Eating beaver meat is uh, not cutting it. Of course, we do have the bear, but if we don't get a gross, then that's what we'll be eating. That uh, bear fat's been really crucial to keeping our energy levels up. And I haven't found any issues with eating protein and fat completely sustainable find I don't have to eat a ton of volume to stay to be able to stay active so my digestive system is really attuned to this kind of diet which I'm really impressed by I wasn't so sure but maybe it's just the last three years I'm designing my body to be more like our ancestors process all the things that our ancestors used to eat every part of the animal all the fat. Uh, my digestive system was such that eating uh, bacon for breakfast was a bad thing, but it could just be because I'm eating too many processed carbs along with it. That's a rabbit pellet. And rabbits in season, so we're keeping an eye out for those guys too. It'll be tricky to spot in this uh, without the snow, although they do change white, so in the winter, that doesn't always help you, but keep an eye out for those guys. They're super camouflaged and obviously they're in the neighborhood, so we might bump one. They're like grouse and they rely heavily on their camouflage, preferring to sit rather than run. They're not long distance runners. They don't like to run. They're fast runners, but they prefer not to. It's too bad I don't know my mushrooms better, but my guess is that one <laughs> probably not edible. But I'm not sure. That's edible. That's a big one. You can always eat it. But sometimes you can only eat it once. I'm really surprised I didn't see anything in here yet. Looks like really, really good habitat. There's lots of moose sign in here. There should be a rabbit in here or a grouse. This is like perfect habitat. But every time I come out in the woods, I realize that the more remote you get, the fewer, the less animals you see. There's more animals a lot of times in edge habitat that humans make. Deep in the woods, there's very few resources for animals to get. They liked having those edges and those clearings where there's more things to eat. Oh, here's a rub here. You sit long enough in one spot, you start to notice things. That's a fairly fresh rub, probably from the last year. Definitely, uh, it looks like a deer. And then if I look down here, there's a depression here. And that might've been made by 
<coughs> let's see if we can find the prints. There's a moose moose hoof in here. A good place for a moose to bed down and hide from everybody. And then if you come over this way a bit more, you'll see another one. I don't think the moose is laying down here anytime recently. These are all old tracks. Uh, I just heard a bunch of shots from Zach, at least two. And uh, I think I heard him say something about ducks. So we'll go have a peek. I came out of the woods at the river and there was a duck and so I snuck through the brush and came right up on the edge of the river and he started to move like he was, might have felt something was up and boom. And then I think I missed him and he spooked and I shot him on the wing. He's down, he's right in the river. Let's get him. Cool, let's go. All right. Zach's uh, bird's out there. Are you gonna swim out and get it? I'm not swimming out to get it. Oh, come on. Too. Survival, man. <laughs> Survival, stay dry, don't get hypothermia. Yeah, right? All right, let's go get the canoe. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, we're back. So as long as Zach can find his duck, out on the river to go grouse hunting and shoots a duck but I you know we're opportunists we'll shoot whatever's in season so we got to paddle out with the boat now here we're gonna paddle over the canoe and hopefully it's just up river here uh, we should be able to find it. it was floating when we last well, saw it well we paddled up and down up and down up and down we found the exact spot where Zach shot it we found feathers but we did not find the bird so the bird came back too or predatory bird like a hawk or something picked it up while we were walking back in the woods it was a good half an hour walk back but we looked absolutely everywhere we did our due diligence uh, Zach's gonna go grab the drone right now and see if we can do a flyover see if for some reason we missed an obvious spot but uh that's a bummer I was I was really looking forward to eating that water catch like a pro <laughs> this is not the duck the duck is back in nature. It either survived, came to, took off, or some other predatory bird or something rather grabbed it. Either way, if it dies later on, another animal will make use of it, such as the cycle of life. So I'm having to eat leftovers. of leftover duck and bear fat for me. And I'm going to start working on a bear stew in a second. Bear cooked and bear fat. I think that's the order of the business today. This stuff is still very rich, still very fatty. So I feel a little bit hungry after all that work, but I tell you, as soon as you get a couple bites of this really fatty stuff, you get satiated very fast. Not like when you eat carbohydrates, you just eat a whole bag of chips and just keep going. You eat two bags of chips. This stuff, like a couple bites, like, ah, I'm good now. There's Zach, way out there, he's pretty bummed, not getting this duck, so he's out walking the shoreline there. See if he can't jump it, if it hit up in the weeds. But uh, we were pretty close to camp when he shot that, just after our big long walk. You can see how vast it is, that bird can be anywhere, we checked both sides left and right, so there's no guarantees out here. Just here is our cooler, if you're not sure how we made this cooler, Go back to the start and figure it out. It's a primitive cooler. It's covered in moss and a depression. I need two ingredients for our meal. I need bear and bear fat. That's it. Ooh, that's cold. Super cold, refrigerator cold. That meat's gonna be tenderizing in there, aging real well. All right, let's put our bare fat aside for a second. Let's deal with what everybody loves, a big hunk of meat. This is a whole bear, the whole thing. And a whole leg of a thing. So we shot this two ways. Over bait and then using dogs. Two very unique ways. Ways that 
It's the only way you can hunt a bear in Northern Ontario, almost. The only other viable way is if you're moose hunting or deer hunting and you happen to see a bear come along. That doesn't happen very often. But there's a lot of opportunistic hunters who will do that exact thing. They won't actually hunt bears, but they'll have a bear tag on them in case a bear happens to wander past them. In Northern Ontario, it's really difficult to come across a bear. Hard to spot, hard to see. So there's a big slab of, slab of meat. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bone this out. The bone marrow, we're gonna make use of too. So once I get all the meat out of here, I'll be able to put the meat, cube it up, put it in a cast iron pot. And then uh, the bone marrow, we're gonna put right on the coal. So we're gonna crack it open and eat it. That's like a really primitive thing to do. Um, don't mind the hair on here. I don't mind the hair on here. It all burns out, cooks out. You can eat hair, it's, you know, every predator eats hair. Um, yeah, so bone marrow is a, a special treat. It's something that cavemen did. It's probably how we got our start eating uh, high calorie foods because the marrow is something that's, that keeps longer and anim other animals have a difficult time unless they have really strong jaws smashing it apart. We can use rocks and other tools to get at it. And we can also use fire to cook it properly to make the bone more fragile so it breaks open easier. Now, if you don't do a lot of butchering, guys, don't be intimidated by this. If you screw it up, it's always chunk meat and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. It would be nice to get some steaks out of this, but um, it's just easier just to make a stew. So the fat, uh, I'm all I'm gonna do is cube that up or we're gonna leave it and put it in like that and let it render at the bottom. And then we're gonna put chunks of meat in here. So if you look at it, you can kind of figure out how the muscle groups work. Ideally, you wanna keep everything in the muscle groups. Um, I don't know bear that well. I'm a, I'm a deer hunter, so I've, I've cleaned a lot of deer. I have not cleaned a lot of bear. So what I'm gonna do is my best. And at the end of it, if it's just right wrong and not cut up right, it's, we're still gonna eat it. And that's pretty much the idea. All right guys, that's a big chunk of meat. That's a big chunk. So smelling this meat, I know that it's still good. And we've had this out of refrigeration probably four or five days now. We've had it in our primitive cooler and it's doing just fine. In fact, it's probably even more tender than the day we got it. As the bacteria breaks the meat down, it becomes more and more easily digested by people and easier to chew. That's the whole aging process. And I think we've got this bang on. The meat, it smells great, looks great. It's nice and red. If there's no green texture in there, it's perfect. All right guys, as you can see, there's no waste. That's it. That's the whole bear in the pot, whole bear leg. We got the bear fat on top, the meat on the bottom. We'd obviously prefer to have it reversed. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And I think by proportion, since we're being keto here, we probably are going to want to add a lot more fat to keep our ratios proper. So I'm going to do that. Add some more fat, get it down at the bottom, and then we're going to add our wadobo spice. Well, it's nice to have soap, but soap is a luxury that we don't have. So a little bit of wet moss makes an excellent scrub brush. It also makes good toilet paper, but I would not suggest you wet it first. Scrub your hands. So I'll take the fat off, that's most of your concern. And then we'll just rinse off. If you don't have moss, you can always use sand. Just scoop up the sand, scrub your hands, rinse it off. That's it. All right guys, we're just gonna let that do its thing. There's something super, super, super important about bear meat and you, you have to cook it all the way through. There's no such thing as medium well, a rare meat. When you, in, the bear, in the black bear world, they carry what's called trichinosis, which is a pretty bad parasite. It uh, lives in the flesh of the bear 
and uh, it's a cyst in the meat. If uh, and when an animal eats it, such as a human, the cyst will open up inside the stomach, releasing a worm. The worm will burrow through your stomach and intestines and then will insist itself in your meat, in your, meat, in your muscle. Um, it's pretty painful. It's uh, flu-like symptoms and probably the worst thing about it is that the uh, worms stay with you for life. If a zombie eats you, they'll get uh, trichinosis. If another animal eats you, they'll get trichinosis. And bears obviously get it from eating infected meat. It's not the end of the world, you'll probably recover. Although, if you get enough of them, it feels pretty bad. Because uh, think about them, they're burrowing through your muscle tissue. Imagine what that feels like. Probably seems a little weird to be packing heat, fishing, but where are the opportunists? So if we see a duck, we will shoot it and eat it. So the gun goes up front with the fishing rod. And Zach's got a homemade rod. You want to show me your homemade rod? Homemade, bush made, bush crafty. Basically looks like a club. Yeah. But uh, that'll work. So, club-like one. And he's gonna borrow some a spoon for me. He's not gonna make one. No, <laughs> not this time. No, next time. All right, so we decided to give this fishing thing a whirl. Paddling out right now. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if there's any fish in this lake. I don't know this lake at all for anything. So I don't know if it's a productive one or if it's gonna be a waste of time. So we'll give it a go, we'll see what happens. Zach's not a total goof. Like, oh, you go with your modern line, I'll use my hand line. No, he actually forgot his rod. And then we, when we packed to come out here, you didn't tell me that you forgot your rod because I had an extra rod. I forgot rod. that I forgot that I forgot my rod. <laughs> so I got my hobo reel and give it a cast. It's a good thing we're not depending on fish. <laughs> <laughs> if we were in a place that had fish, it would be, it, I could still probably, uh, well, they're all Do around something. us. They're all around us jumping. Yeah. <laughs> You're not catching anything. I don't see you catching any of them. Those fish are still surfacing out here way in the middle. There's one over here. These could be bigger fish. These would probably be rainbow the way they're acting. And rainbow are not native here, so they're probably stockies. Stocked rainbow, they're small. They're surfacing right here, right by the boat, which is kind of cool. I'm not really 100% sure what's actually in this lake, but there's a little, a lot of little ones jumping. I wonder if they just stocked rainbow trout in this lake. Um, it's listed on our uh, Ministry of Natural Resources as uh, being a lake trout lake and walleye, but lake trout and walleye don't, uh, they don't surface like this. It seems like little rainbow or little brook trout, um, but I didn't, I had some worms I collected. I picked myself and brought them but uh, I don't have them here because I was expecting to be fishing for lake trout, but there's no deep water in this lake, near that I can tell. I'm gonna go around the corner and have a peek there. Uh, we got distracted by these little jumping fish, hoping they were actually a little bit bigger, so. I don't think we're gonna be catching fish here, Zach. We might have to go someplace else. Sounds like it. Yeah. Feels like it, at least. Yeah. Hey, at least it's not blowing. No, it's perfectly calm. I don't mind being out here. We got lots of food to spare. But uh, I also like to get something different, some fish. Oh yeah, fish would be great. I'm gonna do some beard maintenance. You got a hobo reel. I actually feel like oh, I look like a hobo. I just saw one. What was it? I, they're some sort of little trout. Was it a trout? Out. Yeah, yeah. Huh? I mean, as far as I could tell from it was like just down there, you know, when I could just start to see my lure coming in, it was like was there it, and darted away. Was it chasing your lure? Yeah, nothing else to do. Might as well try to jig it around and see if Anything comes of it. Yeah, there's some more fish surfacing over here. You can see the little rings all in here. I wish I knew what they were. It's kind of hard to catch when you don't know what they are. It was nice to explore anyway and figure out where we were. Um, we kind of went out to the spot on a whim. I knew there would be grouse and ducks and I thought there would be more of them. Easier to get because we went so far north. We're seven hours north of where I live. So, so a little bit on a whim to come out here and Kind of glad I did. Got to see got to see new territory and maybe one that I'll come back and explore. So, yeah. But I'm gonna head back to. We're coming up with a plan. I'm gonna head back to a spot I know. 
I know this spot and I and I know what to do with it so that's the idea now instead of continuously dwindling on dwindling on our food supplies we want to keep ahead of them so we have to go to a new place look how calm it is if you guys ever get a chance to come to Canada just come to Canada for the flat glass like lake like this no wind at all there's a fish jumping out in the middle autumn colors starting to come in it's always fun to explore you never know what you're gonna find out in the wilderness I got a little boat here that's definitely a lake trout type boat where you put outriggers on downriggers and get down deep that's what that looks like and a nice groomed trail I'm probably gonna find a chateau well we're way off in the bush and it looks like uh, somebody beat us to it look at this place beautiful it's quite the shack probably built from the pines that they found right here it's a massive building pretty cool it's pretty really amazing what you can find in the middle of nowhere you think you're in the middle of nowhere and then it's touched by man it's all pretty well organized there's the buildings and structures all over the place oh zach <laughs> got that one all right, I think we got to get back, back to fishing, back to eating our bear. Oh, you got that. Oh man, you got me good. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm on the balcony. So. I was just looking up. I was just looking like. Like, I was like, man, it probably was built from all these large pines right here. And there, <laughs> this clearing was probably made and then turned into this build, this beautiful place. That's all right. Crazy <laughs> you. Uh. Your heart's still going? Yeah. He got me good. He got me good. Looks like we're paddling back in the dark. But that's pretty much standard fare for what we're doing anyway and we're going to be eating in the dark as well we'll probably have a couple hours paddle uh, maybe one and a half or something like that It'd be nice if we had a little bit of a tailwind but I think we've lost it because it's uh, dusk now and that's usually what happens so we're coming back to a dark camp and our fire is out so uh I don't know if we're gonna build the fire back up or not. I touched the top of the pot and it feels like it's warm, so we could probably eat it, but it's always nice to eat by a warm fire. So I might do that. Just get this fire going a little bit and then we'll sit down and enjoy our bear stew. Bear, black bear. All right guys, have a look at that. That looks done to me. What do you think? Yeah, that's pretty fatty. Yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be rich. All right, let's plate this up, have a bite. Mm -hmm. Man, this would be so good if we could add some tubers in there. I think that would be really good, like maybe. Well, if we could find some Jerusalem artichokes, we could throw them in there super easy. And uh, I would have some in Southern Ontario. I'm not super common up here in Northern Ontario, but. Oh man, my mouth is watering. All right guys, what should I eat first? The bear fat? Yep, oh boy. We know that's good. Hmm, melt in your mouth. What are we gonna, you guys figure out how many calories and a spoonful of butter, cause that's what I just ate. A spoonful of lard, it's good man. Oh, the bear meat too. Melt in your mouth, like you said. Beautiful. Guys, did we get a chance? Cook bear meat and bear fat. Make some adobo spice. I also add a little bit of seasoning salt because I wanted the meat to break down. A combination of the fat and the salts will make your meat break down and it'll make it melt in your mouth. Oh dude. You have no idea how good that is. All right, Zach, tell everybody on my channel, what you think of bear meat and bear fat. It's so good. It's just 
We'll go fix your light. Yeah, that's true. He can't even talk. It's so good. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, no, it just melts. The, melts the, in your mouth. The meat is melting in your mouth. Mm hmm That's the meat. You don't have to chew it. It's perfect. And the fat is just perfect. So guys, next time you catch a black bear, make sure you put the two together, the fat and the meat, and you'll be all set. Yeah. And if you're doing wilderness living, we've got a proper ratio, probably 50-50 here, maybe 60-40, something like that. Uh, looks like the rain's coming in, so we have to cut the short. Guys, you can subscribe to my channel or not. I don't care. Subscribe to Zach. I care. He cares. Link will be down below. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the challenge and you've just started watching now, go back to the start because you missed a pile of awesome content. And it's going to explain exactly how we got to this point where we're devouring black bear in its own fat. Mm. This is about as visceral as you can get. So, till next video, go back into the playlist, go watch the beginning, all the way to the end, find out if we can maintain or gain our body weight. We weighed in and we're going to weigh it at the end.